Okay, we are finally back on this uh, Mercedes build. It has been over a week since I've touched this because I got to go to Rome last week. My kids, uh, um, I have two kids, one's in the band and one's in the uh, choir. Uh, they got to go to Rome for the Rome New Year's celebration. They got to march in their parade and all sorts of cool fun stuff. Got to see the Colosseum and the, and the Vatican and we took a day and went to Pompeii and uh, just had a really great time. But we are now back home and it is time to get back on this. So as you can tell, I've got the canopy up in place. I guess it's called the canopy, the, uh, the top. And if you remember where we left off last, I was making a fiberglass structure to put in there. And just before we left to Rome, I painted that a tan color. Um, I got it all sanded smooth and painted. And so if we can take that off, and so there's what that looks like. Notice without the top on it, it sags down a little bit, which is good because that helps pull that fabric down. I did put tape along that edge because that forward edge is just maybe two layers of fiberglass. And I didn't want, um, I mean, I sanded it smooth, but uh, relatively speaking, it's, I don't know, kind of sharp. And I thought just a layer of tape on that edge might help protect the fabric. Um, so you just pull the fabric down, and again, remember that edge of fiberglass goes in between the fabric and that uh, plastic piece there. So you kind of have to pull that up and pull it forward and slip it in place. I need two hands for this. Give me one second. But there we go, looking just like that. And obviously I still need to make the clear windshields. That's going to be coming up very soon. But what I want to focus on now are the bars that go here. Um, again, I'm not sure if they're pronounced Lando or Landu or Landau or whatever, but those Landau bars, as we'll call them, go here, and those are for model motor cars. Those replace the, the um, model um, parts, which you can see right there. They're just stamped I don't know, I'm assuming they're stamped brass and then chrome plated. Um, but uh, those are the kit parts here for model motor cars. They are chrome plated. Actually, the kit parts are nickel plated, I'm pretty sure, if I had to guess. I'm pretty sure they're nickel plated stamped brass. Uh, these are chrome plated brass and a little button that presses into the middle to hold them together. So let me put the camera in the mount and I'll show you how those go together. All right, so we've got the long one and the short one. And apparently it's a common mistake to put these in wrong. Um, they need to go in, sorry, I just out of view there. Uh, but like I said, apparently from reading the model motor cars website and instructions, it's a common mistake for people to put these together wrong. Like they might put this one curved that way, or they'll have that one curved the wrong way, or both. But when they are correct, when the top is down, it needs to make kind of like a nest, like a curve this way and a curve this way. Then when you fold the top up, they both curve this way. And those are held together by this little rivet. At least I'm calling it a rivet, for lack of a better term. And it's just, uh, it's going to be a loose fit in one of the holes and a press fit in the other. And see, so I think it goes in this one. Yeah, so it fits in that one loosely, which means it then press fits into the other one. And I just lied to you, that was not much of a press fit. The other one it was. Um, I already got the other one done. I'll show you that later. Um, but that's what it looks like when it's together. Now, it wasn't a really tight press fit. Um, it was a loose press fit, so I put a dot of CA on the back side just to make sure. With this one, I'm going to have to do that. Um, so I'm going to have to put um, just a little bit of CA on the back side just so it doesn't fall apart. And then we can screw this on to the uh, car body. And it's just the kit screws. Um, a washer and a screw here and then a screw now according to the instructions they have you put a screw with a washer in the backside here 
But on this one, this is the one that goes through the fabric. So they have a washer between that part and the fabric. And it might be just to help protect the fabric a little bit, maybe. Um, but those are just the kit screws. Uh, so let me get this attached. I'll get it screwed to the model, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, and there it is with the Landau bars in. And, again, like I said, the, um, the little center rivet there. Uh, the instructions don't tell you how to keep it together. So again, I just put some CA on the back side. And again, it's kind of like a rivet. And I'm sure it's chrome-plated brass. So my first thought was to hammer the back side like an actual rivet to mushroom it over and hold it in place. But I really did not want to take a chance of damaging the, uh, the chrome plating. I didn't want to chip or crack the chrome plating. And... You know, that fabric here is just all loose. Um, you can kind of primp and prep it and move it and kind of get it to kind of get it to stay in some some form of a position. Now, admittedly, uh, the other side did not come out as nice, and I don't know why. It's almost like there's a little bit of extra fabric and it doesn't know what to do with it, so it just kind of bulges in a few places. Now, that bulge right there. That's actually the plastic piece, because again, there's a piece of plastic that comes up, and that's actually the edge of the plastic right there. That screw goes into that plastic piece. And there's nothing on the back side, um, except for my fiberglass shell. That fiberglass shell ends right about here. You can see the edge of that fiberglass shell. So I suppose um, what I could do is put tape on the back side and tape the fabric to the shell. And that tape would kind of give some support there, um, maybe. But I kind of thought maybe that plastic piece should have curved in more to give that more of a curve. But when you put the door in place with the window up, that pretty much matches the shape of the window. So I think that plastic piece is there to hold that fabric in line with the shape of the window. Um, but there's just nothing here to keep that in the right position. So I think a piece of tape on the back side, uh, just a piece of uh, low tack or low stick, cheap, um, you know, tape, something like this, something like that, because that's not really that sticky, but it would hold things together. Uh, but again, the other side um, is not, I don't know if I can get a good view of it here. The other side is not as good. Um, doesn't really want to stay in the right place that well. So again, maybe a piece of tape on that would be better. Um, but I'm not really sure exactly what to do with that or how to handle that. Um, now, I did show that to the guy I'm building this for. And um, he suggested that maybe he'll just display it, you know, primarily on this side when the top is down like that. Um, but most of the time, probably, you know, 90% of the time, it's going to be folded back, and that's not an issue. I just, I feel bad that that side is not as nice as this side. But again, I don't know why that side came out good, and I don't know why that side came out bad. It's like, it's just fabric that you got to get lucky with it following the right shape. And I don't know, um... You know, it kind of, uh, I hate the phrase, it is what it is, but I don't know, I, I don't know what else to say about it. Um, but anyways, that is done, that part is done. So now that that's done and I can fold the top back, the next step, I want to make the straps that hold it back with the buckles. Let me, uh, let me put the camera down and we'll talk about the leather straps here for a second. Okay, for the leather straps that are going to hold the fabric back, I went ahead and cut four, uh, four pieces of leather uh, for the belts. These are all way too long, um, but I'm going to put, uh, there's, there's four, basically there's four straps total. Um, two, two on the back side, two on the inside, and they, roll, they wrap around and have buckles to hold it together. Those are way too long. Um, but once I get them all buckled up, I will trim off the excess. Now to cut these, uh, you just take a scrap piece of leather and a straight edge and a very sharp blade, 
cut them to the width that will fit inside of the buckles. Um, I don't even know what that width is. Um, it's uh, a little under a quarter inch, like three sixteenths. Oh, sorry, it wasn't even in view. Three sixteenths. So cut those, I, again, just cut them to fit the buckles. Again, it's three sixteenths. And what I did was I used CA on the edge. That gives the edge a nice finished look. If you don't do that, here's a scrap piece of leather. Uh, there's the edge of the leather um, untreated. And over time, it can get a little fuzzy. It's not going to fray like fabric, but it can get a little bit fuzzy. It can, it can just get kind of messy a little bit. So to make a more finished look, I put... CA on the edge and then wiped it off, you know, so it's now got a nice hard finished edge for that belt. I think that looks much better. Um, so again, these are ready to go. I just need to get out the buckles. I need to fold the top back and then we can, uh, I'll reposition the camera and we can look at that. So give me a minute and we'll come back to those buckles. Okay, here's the uh, top folded back. So you can see I've got the straps in here, and those just go around. Let's see if I can see one there. The little buckle there, just fold it around and glued. And I got these buckles back here. Now I did these different from the way the instructions tell you. If you look at the instructions, that piece right there, they tell you to fold that back, and that makes like the loop with the little pin that goes through a hole in the letter. The problem with this is that little pin part, I'm, I'm sure there's a technical term for it, but I don't know what that is. But so normally that goes in, you know, if you look at a normal belt, the belt has holes in it. That part goes through the hole to make it as tight as you want. But that part should be able to pivot or hinge back and forth. To make it easy to unbuckle it and rebuckle it, well, if you just bend that over, um, that doesn't bend. I mean, it doesn't pivot. You could bend it, but it won't pivot. So trying to get the leather through that and then poke a little hole in it for that to go in at the appropriate tightness and then unbuckle it and rebuckle it at this scale would be really difficult, if not not possible. And if you bend that thing back and forth to, to help you put the, to put the leather strap in, eventually that's just going to break. After two or three bends, it's probably just going to break. So I'm not using that little pin part. I, I cut that off. And also, those pieces, that's what the leather attaches, or that's what the strap attaches to on the car. That piece goes right there. One there and one there. And again, that's where the, the, the strap attaches to the car. And there's one on the inside here and another one over here. So there's four of those total. For some reason, the kit includes six of those. So I had two extras. So what I did was I used this one and this one in each one of these straps. So if we come back and take a look at it, uh, there's the extra one. And that's the one I cut the pin off. So now you just feed the leather through that and then under this one. So let me put the camera down, and we'll do that, and then we'll um, talk about what's next. Okay, hopefully you can see everything okay. When you fold the top back, uh, there's a few ways you can do it. Um, I just kind of rolled it and, and put it like this, and I think that's, I think that's pretty good like that. Um, not sure exactly, but that's as best as I think I can do. Uh, so what I'll do then here, again, you just take this through this one and then through the other one like that. Just like that. And I'll cut that length down. I'm 
just going to fit the back seat in just to make sure it's pulled back enough. So I'm thinking we kind of want it off the back of that seat rest. And again, you can primp and prep it as much as you want. But I think that's looking pretty good like that. So next step, we'll cut these to length and probably, probably something like that. And what I will do later off camera is on that end, I will cut a couple of uh, 45s in the end. Something like that, but neater and more even. And then I'll put some CA on that edge, just like I did the edge here, just to make it look a little more polished and finished. But those are the straps, the buckles, and, and that's that part done. But I think that's about as good as you could expect to get it. Um, I think. I'll keep prepping and primping and, yeah, I'll keep messing with it. But that's pretty much it. Now, the next thing I really want to focus on. I really want to get the whole area here done. That's meaning the steering wheel, the... Um, the actual windshields, windshield wipers, rear view mirror, get the seats in for good. I also need to get the battery um, hardware or the battery mounted hardware mounted with the wires and everything. I really want to get that done. However, I would be a little bit leery about having all that stuff in, which is somewhat fragile, and worry about bumping it, knocking it, hitting it, breaking it while I'm doing more complicated things like fitting the side fenders. And right now at this point, I'm not concerned about those items installation-wise. They should be fairly straightforward and simple. They should not take much time at all. What I am more concerned about is the fitment of the side fenders. So I really need to start fitting those side fenders because those they could either go perfectly well, or they could cause lots of problems. And uh, it would not surprise me either way, to be honest with you. So, so I'm thinking the next task I want to do is the side fenders. So before I can do that, though, I really need to do the exhaust. Um, now, he did buy the exhaust kit for model motor cars. And that kit comes with... That kit comes with chrome fittings like that. I guess you can see that through the bag. It comes with chrome fittings like that. And it comes with tubes like this. Now the kit tubes look like this. And they look horrible. And they're garbage. And that's as far as they bend. Um, these can bend a little bit further. But I actually found different tubes like this they're the same diameter but they bend a whole lot more and you need that bending um, there's an aluminum rod in there no there's not uh, it also came with an aluminum rod yeah it's not in here I thought it was in there but it's not in there it also comes with an aluminum rod so when you bend it the aluminum rod keeps it in place so notice how if I do that it springs back well the aluminum rod will keep that in position and if you look at the bend radius on this, that's as far as that can really bend, where, notice this one. So this is what model motor cars gives you, which works better than the kit parts, but this works even better. And if you look at the spirals, if you look at the real car, in my opinion, those tighter, skinnier spirals are more to scale. And again, that's just my opinion. Um, I think those look better. It works better. But let me show you the reason why you need as much bending as possible out of these. Plus this, this came from a, it's called a, a flameless lighter. 
Um, I think I showed it on a previous video. I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but I went on to um, eBay and I looked up lighter because I think this even came off of like a fireplace lighter, I think. So I looked up lighter and I found this. And it's called a flameless lighter. And I ordered them just to see if it would fit. And they do. The inside diameters are the same. Um, I think they look better and they're going to work better. So let me show you why you need so much bending out of that. When you look at where the exhaust has to go, it has to go from here. Now the chrome parts from model motor cars will replace that piece. So that's, that's going to get cut off. Um, actually, no, I take that back. Um, that's replacing a plastic piece that's not on here yet. So that does not get cut off. Um, I don't think. Anyways, um, a chrome piece goes here. So anyways, the pipe has to go from here to here and then to here. And then back here, it goes from here around here and to here. The problem is, when you take a look at this, and this is the one for model motor cars, that's not a straight shot. So if you try to put that on, notice how it's at an angle. It's not a straight shot onto that post. So that has to make a tight S turn right there for that to go on and then curve down to here. And this one, again, that has to, it's a little further away, so it's a little bit easier, but uh, that has to make a tight S turn right in here to come down to here. Now the kit parts, the kit parts from Poacher, yeah, they don't, they don't make, they don't bend sharp enough to make that connection. So when you look at kits that people have done of this, if they use the kit parts, a lot of them I see, most of them I see, they're just broken off and just hanging loose. Or they're jammed in there at a weird angle. Um, which might have to be the case for even new ones, because again, it's, it's, not, it's not a straight on fit. Um, to help me out, what I've done already, I have opened this edge here up. I've sanded that down more to give me more room here and here. Um, right now, these are still a little bit loose, not connected, just to give me a little bit more wiggle room. So once I get those pipes fitted, that'll get mounted for good. Um, also, while I'm in this area, I need to install the jack. He bought he bought the uh, jack from Auto Motor Cars. Now, looking at photos, this jack gets mounted to the firewall, uh, like right here somewhere. Now, there's no way to mount it, so I'm going to have to make jack mounts so it's mounted here, not just glued onto the firewall. That would look stupid if it was just glued to the fire. No offense if any of you just did that. Um, but for me, I'm going to make some mounts um, so that actually mounts onto the firewall. I want to do that and the exhaust before I mount that fender because I'll just have more room to do it. The fender might get in my way. So I'm going to end this video here because I think it's been way too long. Uh, in the next video, I will do the jack and the exhaust. And then finally, we'll get the fenders on. And then we'll get all of that stuff in here done. So until then, until next time, thanks for watching.